The Battle of Custazza took place on June 24, 1866 during the Third Italian War of Independence in the Italian unification process. The Austrian Imperial Army, joined by the Venetian Army, jointly commanded by Archduke Albrecht of Habsburg, decisively defeated the Italian Army, led by Alfonso Ferrero La Marmara and Enrico Cialdini, despite the Italians' strong numerical advantage. Background In June 1866, the German Kingdom of Prussia declared war on the Austrian Empire. The recently formed Kingdom of Italy decided to seize the opportunity and allied with Prussia with the intention of annexing Venetia and thus uniting the Italian peninsula. The Italians rapidly built up a military force that was twice the size of their Austrian counterparts defending Venetia. Order. Austrian South Army 5th Corps. Moring, Perret Brigade 7th Corps. Scudier, Topley, Welsersheim Brigade 9th Corps. Bock, Kicksburg, a Wechbecker Brigade's Reserve Division. Two Wheat Brigade's Cavalry Division. Italian Mincio Army 1st Corps. 1st, 2nd, 3rd and 5th Divisions. 3rd Corps. 7th, 8th, 9th and 16th Divisions. Also a cavalry division battle. In the fourth week of May, the Italians divided their forces into two armies. The 11 division strong army of the Mincio led by General Alfonso Ferrero La Marmara and accompanied by King Vittorio Emmanuel II. And the 5 division strong army of the Po, led by Enrico Cialdini. The Austrians, using the advantage of interior lines and the protection given by the quadrilateral forts, concentrated against the army of the Mincio and left a covering force against the army of the Po. The king's force was to move into the Trentino region, while La Marmara's crossed the Mincio River and invaded Venetia. Meanwhile, the Austrian soldiers under Archduke Albrecht of Habsburg marched west from Verona to the north of the Italians, in an attempt to move behind the Italians so as to cut them off from the rear, and thus, slaughter them. At the start of June 24, 1866, La Marmara changed the direction of his front toward the same heights the Austrians were trying to use as launching point for their attack. Instead of an enveloping battle, the two forces collided head-on, with both headquarters trying to discover what happened in the heights near Villa Francais. On the Austrian left the Austrian cavalry attacked the Italian 1st Corps without orders at 7 a.m., although the attack was ineffectual and only crippled the Austrian cavalry. It created a panic in the Italian rear and immobilized three Italian divisions, who for the rest of the battle only took a defensive posture. During the morning isolated fights broke out in Olio C, San Rocco, Custoza and San Giorgio between Roddick's V Corps and Durando's I Corps. After fierce fighting the division of Sorrel was thrown out of Olio C, broke, and fled to the Mincio. Sertori's division was blocked from Montevento by Roddick's other troops and by 8 a.m. he was thrown back by fierce bayonet attacks. By 8.30 a.m. however, gaps were opening in the Austrian line. Brignone's division had taken Belvedere Hill near Custazza after fighting with Hartung's 9th Corps. By 9 a.m., Hartung started launching attacks at Monte Croce, trying to dislodge Brignone, but by 10 a.m. the Austrians seemed spent. The Italians however neglected reinforcing Brignone. The king's younger son Amadeo led a counter-attack, which failed, with the prince being severely wounded, and Brignone was ultimately forced to leave the position. La Marmara then ordered the divisions of Cugia and Govone up the heights to relieve Brignone. This forced the Austrian brigades of Bock and Scudier out of Custoza. Scudier then retired from the field, opening another gap in the Austrian line. On the Italian left Sertori had managed to stabilize his front after Sorail's flight. At this point in the battle, both sides were thinking they were facing a lost battle. By 1 p.m. La Marmara, deciding the battle was lost and wanting to secure his bridgeheads, ordered a retreat. 
Unbeknownst to La Marmara, Govone's division had beaten back the VII Corps and captured Belvedere Hill. By 2 p.m. Roddick launched an attack on Monte Vento and Santa Lucia. When Sertori's division gave way, a hole appeared in the Italian line, which the Austrians exploited. Govone, who thought he had finally broken through the Austrian line, suddenly found himself isolated near Custoza, with Roddick on one flank and an Austrian brigade making for the bridge at Monzambano. At this point, he was attacked in his other flank by Moasik, who without orders had committed the two Austrian reserve brigades to the fight. At the same time Hartung's corps was ordered to restart the fight. They drove off the division of Kujia, capturing six guns and many prisoners on the top of Montitor, which they had earlier failed to capture. After a bombardment by 40 Austrian guns, at 5 p.m. the Italians were driven out of Custoza by Moasik. Aftermath, the Austrians were victorious, both strategically and tactically. The Italians were driven back across the Mincio out of Venetia. It was, however, not a decisive defeat. To inflict a decisive defeat on the Italians, Albrecht's forces needed to drive southwest to seize the bridges across the Mincio. Such a pursuit would have trapped the disbanded remnants of the two Italian corps on the east bank of the river and would have enabled Albrecht to invade the Kingdom of Italy itself. Instead, Albrecht did not order a pursuit because he thought the Austrians were too exhausted and the Austrian cavalry had been mauled by frivolous attacks in the morning, squandering the possibility to the destroy the demoralized army of the Mincio. On June 26, 1866, Albrecht shifted his headquarters back to Verona because he was concerned about a possible French reply to an Austrian invasion of Lombardy. He should not have been. Even the emperor advised Albrecht to ignore all political considerations. After their loss at Konigratz, the Austrians were forced to transfer one call from South Army to Austria to cover Vienna, weakening their forces in the Veneto. The Italians, however, resumed their offensive only in mid-July. Cialdini crossed the Po and occupied Rovigo, Padua, Treviso, Sandonia di Pialve, Valdobbiadene and Odizzo, Vicenza and finally Udine, in Free Uli. In the meantime Garibaldi's volunteers had pushed forward from Brescia towards Trento fighting victoriously at the Battle of Bizecca of July 21. Despite the victory at Custoza and a naval defeat of the Italians at Lissa, due to Konigratz the Austrians were forced to surrender to the Prussians and were forced to cede Venetia. Scenes from the Italian side of this battle were recreated for the 1954 Lucino Visconti film, Senso.